Good. Welcome, everyone, or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Dr. Grant Pierre. I am faculty at the University of Massachusetts Primary Care Sports Medicine Fellowship. And I am here to talk to you today about the hand and radiology to hand to give you an introductory lecture into uh, how to go about looking at these x-rays and so forth. Uh, I have no disclosures to discuss, so let's get started. So our objectives today is we're going to go through and talk about a systematic approach, reviewing x-rays of the hand to going through each x-ray, each view, and making sure we're not missing any pathology uh, that could change our management. And we're going to show you how to do that today. We're going to review some common medical conditions of the hand as time allows here uh, to kind of get used to practicing that systematic approach here. And we're also going to clinically correlate these x-rays uh, with pathology so we get some experience with that also. So we can correlate, kind of build this all together, approach it via, approach each x-ray via a systematic approach, uh, determining what the pathology is and ultimately uh, beyond the scope of this talk in our own practice, determining what management we're gonna do for this pathology. So we can't talk about uh, x-rays of the hand without going through the anatomy of the hand, okay? And so this is a great basic picture here. Uh, so basically we have the distal radial ulnar joint at the bottom of our screen here. And then we come up into the carpal bones and there's several carpal bones and there's different uh, memory aid tools to help you remember this, but we're just gonna go through them today. You have the scaphoid bone, which we think of a lot with uh, foosh injuries or fall on the outstretched hand injuries. Um, next to that, we have the lunate bone here. You think of scaphalunate disassociation with those type of fush injuries also. Um, coming up and finishing up that first row of carpal bones, we have the triquetral, okay? And the pisiform, which is on the triquetral, which is not pictured in this uh, image here today. On the second row here of the carpal bones, we have the trapezium underneath the base of that first metacarpal bone here, that thumb metacarpal bone here, uh, which we think of a lot with Rolando or Bennett fractures. We have the trapezoid next to that. And then we have the capitate. And then finally, we have the handmate to finish out the carpal bones. Um, next, we're going up to the next stage. We have the metacarpal bones, okay? And so we have five fingers. So we have five metacarpal bones. You can have different fractures in different areas of these. They can be at the head. They can be at the neck. They can be at the base of these bones. Uh, and then we're going to start off with the thumb here. We have a proximal and distal phalanx. Um, the rest of the second through fifth, uh, metacarpal bones have a proximal, middle, and distal phalanx, okay? So this is something to remember um, when you're looking at these images. So how do we go about doing a systematic review of the, of the hand and looking at those x-rays? So I use an ABCD system, and then we have an extra S for soft tissues here. And so first, we're looking at the alignment. Um, our the bones, uh, the carpal bones aligned in those first two rows. Is the distal radial ulnar joint aligned? Is the are the metacarpal joints aligned? Are the proximal phalanx, the distal phalanx is all aligned? Or is there a dislocation that we can see? Uh, which direction is that dislocation? And so forth. Is there ulnar or radial deviation? Uh, suggestive of arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, next, we're looking at the bones, the B here. Um, is there Are there any fractures? One of the main reasons we get an x-ray. Are there any fractures? Are there any erosions? Are there any interarticular erosions or uh, mid-carpal erosions that we should see here? Uh, next, we come to C for cartilage. Uh, is there any joint space narrowing? Are there any interarticular erosions there also with that? Uh, distribution, we're looking at, for example, so is there symmet symmetrical joint space narrowing or sclerosis or osteophytes or ulnar or radial deviation there? that could suggest a rheumatological condition? Is it sparing uh, those distal uh, phalanx joints there that may suggest a rheumatological condition? And then we're looking at soft tissues. Is there swelling around there? Uh, a swelling around that area of tenderness on our physical exam. We see some swelling on the x-ray too, but we don't quite see a fracture. How can we correlate this with our physical exam and so forth? Is this a bone bruise or do we need further imaging? Okay. And this is all the things that are going through our are going through our minds as we're looking at these x-rays. Remember, we're correlating these x-rays with our physical exam. 
All right. So the first view that we always look at is what we call the PA view. Okay. Um, this gives a great overall view of the distal radial ulnar joint, the carpal bones, and the metacarpal. So you get a little bit of a snapshot of everything here. Um, so it can be used for a variety of diagnoses here. Remember, we're going to go through the A, B, C, D. So we have the alignment here. Everything looks very well aligned here. We're nice in a straight line. This metacarpal bone, uh, metacarpal bones, the proximal, middle, and distal phalanxes here. Uh, the carpal bones look well aligned. Everything looks well aligned here. Uh, B is for our bones. Uh, no fractures that I can identify here. C for cartilage, joint space narrowing. D for distribution. And then, of course, S for soft tissues here. Okay, so that's the PA view. Next, we have the oblique view. Okay, so this gives us a little bit more information about the degree and location of a suspected fracture dislocation. Is that dislocation more volar? Is it more dorsal? Which direction is this dislocation? Because it does change our management. Um, is there more ulnar or radial deviation of a joint? Um, and it just gives us more uh, information from that standpoint to help with our management here. So oblique is kind of the second most common view that you'll see of the hand. Lateral view, of course, a lot of times you'll see uh, kind of the index finger and the thumb touching, but a lot of these uh, lateral views most commonly. Um, and so this is very helpful for, again, giving us more information about the degree of a fracture dis dis displacement here. Uh, is it more displace that to where now conservative management isn't appropriate or is it maybe I should refer him to one of my surgical orthopedic colleagues at this point and location of foreign bodies is where it's also very helpful also. All right so let's come to a little case here uh, and let's say we have a 22 year old female playing soccer or lacrosse and she falls down to an outstretched hand she comes up, she's in a lot of pain. She comes to you and the athletic trainer on the sideline. And you notice a lot of swelling around her index finger here. And it doesn't look completely well aligned even when you're looking at it off the field, on the field here. Uh, so you get some x-rays, totally appropriate. And let's start off with the PA view. Remember, we're gonna go through it systematically with that ABCD approach here. So first, let's look at alignment. And so look at the alignment of this index finger here. Um, obviously that's dislocated here and it's not in the right spot. Um, it looks like it's more medial on this side, but again, we're going to get more views so we can characterize that a little bit more. This is just the PA view, just one view. B for bones, or is there any other underlying fractures that we can see? Is there an intraarticular fracture from this dislocation that would change our management? Cartilage, any arthritis that we can see, joint space narrowing that we can see, Okay. D for distribution, um, everything else looks great. I don't see anything that would correlate there. And soft tissue swelling, it does look like she has some soft tissue swelling around this finger here that we can very obviously see. All right, let's move to our left. And it looks like we have uh, two uh, oblique views here of that index finger. And look, uh, from that view, we see a little bit more information about and that morphology of that dislocation here. So it looks like we have a dorsal, proximal phalanx, dislocation here. And it looks like we may have a small avulsion fracture right here also, okay? And this just looks like, a, this is just another zoomed in view of that uh, oblique view there also, okay? So that's how we do that systematic approach here. And we have an interphalangeal joint dislocation, okay? Um, and that's how we would go through that systematically on an X-ray. So, the next topic here, let's talk about another common diagnosis that we commonly see, and this is mallet finger um, that we have right above here. And so what is mallet finger? So mallet finger, is we, if we don't already know to review a little bit, is a avulsion of that distal extensor tendon on the base of that distal phalanx, on, that, on the dorsal side of that distal phalanx here. So the patient or the athlete cannot actively extend their DIP joint, but you can passively move it, okay? And so... As always with these type of injuries, we get x-rays. So uh, x-rays. So let's look at these x-rays and let's try to go through them systematically here. So we're going to start in the middle here. It looks like we have a PA view of this mallet finger here. And looking, and remember starting with A with alignment here, it actually looks very well aligned. Um, the thumb looks very well aligned. Second, third, and fourth, and fifth digits look very well aligned. The carpal bones from what we can see look very well aligned. 
you know, this PA joint, B, bones. I can't obviously see a fracture from here. Um, see uh, cartilage here, not a lot of joint space and error in here. A distribution, I don't see anything to contribute and maybe there's a little bit of soft tissue swelling, but otherwise very unremarkable PA view. And this is why we get multiple views. So let's come here. It looks like we have a uh, further expanded, look, look, looks like a lateral view of this index finger here. And look, we have a, looks like an avulsion fracture off of that distal phalanx on the dorsal side here. But that does change our management and what we're gonna do and how long this can take to heal, okay? And so look at that alignment here. We have a, we see that dorsal fragment here, that dorsal fra fragment here that's very minimally displaced. Uh, otherwise, bones-wise, uh, we see that that obvious fracture there, but no other uh, no other fractures that I can identify on this index finger here. Cartilage-wise, not much joint space and everyone like we discussed. Distribution's fine, and very not much soft tissue swelling, which is with this injury. And so that's an example of another systematic review of a different type of pathology, mallet finger, where we actually have a dorsal avulsion fracture associated with this mallet finger. All right, so let's come to another diagnosis here. It looks like we have a PA view, and it looks like we have an oblique view, and we already have the diagnosis up there, but let's kind of just take our time and go through this systematically again. And so it looks like, let's start off with the thumb here, or let's start off with the carpal bones for completion's sake. Those look very well aligned here. Let's look at the thumb here, also very well aligned. Index finger, second through fourth, very well aligned. Okay, and then we kind of here, we're kind of coming up that alignment. We're looking at that distal metacarpal here. We're looking at the head here, and it looks a little bit different. Okay, it looks like the head, uh, head of this metacarpal here is not completely aligned with the shaft of that metacarpal here. Okay. Now let's look at bones. Is there any obvious fractures we could see? Uh, does look like there is, we, we kind of know what it is, but it looks like there's a, a this metacarpal neck here, that there is a fracture line there that we can obviously see, and that there is some misalignment for it. And so why do we care about those? Because with di different degrees of alignment, it means it's more surgical versus we can treat it more conservatively with splinting and casting and so forth, okay? Um, Cartilage-wise, arthritis here, it looks like we have some small erosions here, uh, very mild erosions at the distal PIP joint, but again, uh, nothing spectacular, uh, some mild age-associated changes here. Distribution-wise, no, it just looks like one thing there, and then some soft tissue swelling, yes, this he or she definitely does have some soft tissue swelling here in that fifth metacarpal uh, neck there area. And then it looks like we also have a Oblique view here, uh, so we can see that fifth metacarpal a little bit more in that alignment. So it actually looks very well aligned here. It's maybe minimally, uh, maybe a 10 or 20 degree angulation here, nothing crazy. Um, so that means it'd be probably awesome for conservative management. Uh, fracture here, we can clearly see that fracture line at the metacarpal neck here. Um, we have the cartilage here. Again, we talked about it. Uh, not much joint space there. It's very mild. Uh, joint space area, but we can actually see that a little bit more up here at those distal PIP joints here. Um, and then distribution-wise, soft tissue swelling, we obviously have some soft tissue swelling around that fifth metacarpal here. But this is obviously called a boxer's fracture um, is what we're dealing with here. And uh, this is what's going on for that. Uh, so a great systematic review of this imaging here. So to sum it all together for us today, so we looked at some common uh, views of the hand, so the PA, the oblique, and a lateral view, what we can look and see from each one and why we get each one. Um, we see some systematic, we went through a systematic review of the x-rays at A, B, C, D, uh, looking at alignment, B for bone, looking for fractures, erosions, C for cartilage, looking for joint space narrowing, D for distribution. If we're looking at it sparing some parts of the hands or there's symmetrical arthritis that could, could suggest a rheumatological disease. And then finally, soft tissues, if they're swelling or so forth, that correlates with what we're seeing on the physical exam here. We, inter we just introduced some basic common conditions of the hand. It's beyond the scope of this talk, this very quick introduction to just look at some things and kind of correlate that with our systematic review of those x-rays. So it looks like today we saw a uh, uh, dorsal dislocation, we saw a mallet finger, 
and when we also saw a fifth metacarpal neck fracture. And then we, uh, again, I want to recommend that you practice reading x-rays as, as much as possible. Don't just look at those reports, or even if you have a report and you know it's a common fracture when you're on your rotations and fellowship or residency or so forth, look at those x-rays, try to describe those x-rays and see if you come to that same radiological diagnosis, or if you disagree with it and you see a little bit more there. Get used to reading those things, get used to feeling comfortable reading your own x-rays. And the only way you can do that is practice, 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 okay? So that is the end of my talk here today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, again, it's just a quick introduction here to uh, x-rays of the hand here. And I had a great time talking with you here. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and more than happy to reach out and have a conversation. Uh, have a great day and thank you.